This is the Power Break Podcast number 104, titled, Bring Out the Ledger. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobBrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Bob, what's up, buddy? Boy, howdy. Everything is happening with the coronavirus and everything. Oh, man. Man, things are happening around, and so we are in an area that uh, people are saying, what is going on here? But that's what we want to talk about today. But uh, before we get into all that, let's just talk about uh, all the people that have been uh, listening to our program and telling others, and you know, yeah. it's, and the word is spreading, and so we thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you for thank leaving you. A, a rating and a review wherever you download the podcast. And uh, although, I mean, we've been offering this book, we'll talk more about that later, and we haven't had any response to that. I know we haven't, uh, and, and that's perfectly okay. And if yeah. and if you want to send a question, but you don't want to give your address, because I understand, I, I'll even arrange for a place where you can pick it up. I mean, you can pick it up here at Christ Presbyterian. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that we can do that. So <laughs> if you, you got go. a question and you want to give it, man, shoot it our way. We're happy to answer it. We're happy to accommodate. That's right. Well, here's a question for you. You're pretty good at doing assessments. So what about your life do you find it uh, a, never find a need to assess the most? Oh, the most is always my spiritual life. Well, always. I always. like that. It's always. Um, now, uh, a close second is my physical taking care of myself and um, whether or not, you know, I'm losing weight, gaining weight. Because uh, was it Einstein that said that which is not measured will not improve? It might have been. Oh. I, I, I can't. But they also put it the other way that if you measure something that, that you also will improve. So Oh, see there you go. Either way you slice it, it says the same thing. It says it? the same thing. It's beautiful. How do you like that, JT? Tomato tomato. <laughs> Was that <laughs> that's another granny thing. saying there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So yeah, it's definitely my spiritual life because it's so easy. To do what James talks about, you know, the, the person who doesn't do the word. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, it's like a person looks in the mirror and yes. sees how much he needs to comb his hair, JT. <laughs> oh, you know something, man? I just came from a swim. You've got to forgive me for that. I yeah. forgive you, but I just thought it was pretty cool. You know, he's all disheveled today. And Oh, like, definitely disheveled. Yes. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Anyway. So uh, here's a point that God points out the need to assess where we are in life in every area. And it's well said that the things that we're willing to track or assess are the things we care about the most. So what we're talking about today is the need to assess what we are putting into our minds because it has a great deal of effect on whether we are given to fear or to confidence. Yep. Philippians chapter 4 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Then he goes on to say, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Yeah, you know, and as a police officer, that's really important for my guys. Wow. Um, yeah. Because, you know, we don't get invited to people's birthday party. We get invited when, you know, Uncle Chuck shows up to the birthday party and yeah, wreaks havoc gun. at it. Yeah, yeah with, right. With a gun or something. Yeah, so it's never, we don't get, we see a lot of negative things. So mm-hmm. if we're not actively doing this, man, you can go down a negativity spiral in seconds. Yeah. You know, it's... um. And I just realized something. You didn't talk about what in your life you continuously find <laughs> needs to be assessed, well, sir. Uh, well, the uh, the spiritual life, the spiritual aspect of life is very important. And, of course, being a man with a lung problem, I always assess whether how oh. my lungs are doing on a daily basis. I yeah. take a, a, my pulse oximeter, get my O2 sat, and then the, and my... Uh, uh, your whoop whoop, <laughs> my whoop whoop tells. <laughs> actually, yeah, it does. It tells me my respiratory rate, and actually, they have tracked that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the, the whoop has been given some national recognition because um, of their people. There's like 150 thousand people wearing whoop these days. Nice. And the people that have come down with the COVID 19 have actually demonstrated that their respiratory rate 
has jumped significantly before they had any symptoms. Really? Yes. And That's so interesting. Um, it's interesting. The PGA has purchased the uh, Whoop for their members and has many members wearing the Whoop so that they can, you know, before they ever show any symptoms or anything else, they just look at their Whoop. Uh, so their average respiratory rate goes up just prior to or showing symptoms? Not the symptoms? average, just the re- respiratory rate, and then it oh. shows it average. Just like, okay, mine hangs around 13.8 to 14.2. Okay. Okay, if mine would jump to 16 or above, that's a sign that I'm about oh, to be you. sick. Right. And, uh, and because of the COVID-19 having an effect on the respiratory system, uh, and really lodging in on the respiratory system yep. uh, that's been, a, a, I mean, a surefire demonstration of, wow. And so um, that WHOOP has received all this n- recognition from different organizations and everything else. That's and awesome. It, it that's really, really is. good for them, man. That's excellent. So that's the first thing I look at when I get up in the morning. I look at what my respiratory rate was during the night. And I'm very thankful that, you know, I, I was a little concerned and went up to, Fourteen five. Oh yeah, okay. you, poor, you poor thing. Yeah, and then it went down to thirteen eight or something like that. So, you know, when I look at the average, it just it's just it's basically around that line, and that's what they say it should be. So nice, nice. So anyway, we got off track, but anyway, a little bit and a great advertisement for Whoop. So well, yes, yeah, so I, nice. I should call Will Ahmed, who is the founder of Whoop, and say, hey. Maybe you should sponsor JT and me. Why don't you send us a little bit of that whoop whoop cash? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give away more books too if you send me the cash. How's that? That's my deal. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hey, um, so let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog, folks. If you haven't been to BobRubaker dot com, as always, I will always encourage you to get there. Check out the resources and sign up for the blog. It will pop into your email every Monday. It's a great way to start the week. It's one of the things that I really, truly look forward to. But let's continue to talk about the bring out the ledger because, you know, once again, all, everything spiritual now is really something that should be the emphasis for people oh, because really? of where we are as a society. There's so much anger and so much hate. And we as Christians, really, we are called to not be that. That's right. So it's really super important for us to stay on this, to make sure we don't turn into it. This has really been an encouragement to me. I, I wrote this, uh, you know, um, before, and sent it out this past Monday as we are as we are recording this. And this is one that I could not believe how many responses I received to people that let me know how much they appreciated this. And, and that's not to pat me on the back. That's to say, I really it, this uh, sprung out of what I've been preaching this past Sunday, and uh, so it comes together. Not only that, but some questions I had from members of our church here about. Fighting off the negativity. So here we go. Here's what I wrote: that you don't have to, you don't have to search for frightening news today. It's everywhere. So much so that the news services are filled with it. The internet thrives upon it. And the social media is overwhelmed with comments about it. Of course, as bad news travels through the conversations of people who have ingested all the above, and the result is great fear everywhere. And I was asked recently by a concerned person in our church who can happen to be absorbing a great deal of this information from a variety of sources about what we can do. So consider what we can do to counter the plethora of negativity. The first thing is to look at God's word and see how uh, people of faith handled similar situations and take note of what happened. In particular, how God gave them courage to face the situation. Now, in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, uh, whatever it was written of, in former times was written for our instruction that we, through the endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now, one such case would be David's writing of Psalm 56, which he wrote under a great duress and reason to fear. In that psalm, you'll find David expressing his fear, but countering that fear with the voice of faith. And he does this sequence twice to affirm to himself and to his readers that God is on his side and there is no reason to fear. Notice the two voice faith choruses in Psalm 56 as it comes down to the voice of faith. Psalm 56, verses 3 and 4 of the first stanza says, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? And then in Psalm 50, 56, verses 10 and 11, he writes, In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? 
Now, please notice his action of recognizing his fear served as a warning to focus on his, his trust in the Lord. And he doesn't stop there. Out of faith, he brings his focus on particularly upon God's word and praise to God. The result is resounding confidence. It's awesome. So awesome. Yeah. Yep. I mean, this is uh, so. And by the way, when you take Psalm 56, David wrote that when he was in a place called Gath. Oh, yeah. Uh Okay. Gath happens to be the hometown of one by the name of Goliath. Oh, interesting. So David is running from Saul, who turned on him. Yep. And he ran ran out of the country, ran into the city, probably thinking he was safe because of the walls of the city. (laughs) And all of a sudden, people decided that they knew where he was, and they, they started talking about Hey, this is the guy that has killed many people. They actually sang in Jerusalem. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. This is David. And so he starts acting like... Awkward (laughs) moment. Awkward moment. (laughs) So he starts acting like a crazy man and let his spit come down on his beard and scratch the walls and they (laughs) threw him out of the city. That's actually a great strategy if you think about it. Because... Nobody wants to be around a dude that might have, you know, some kind of like rabies or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so in the midst of that, he writes Psalm 56. The point is this. It's important what you take note of, how you fill your mind. Yep. Romans chapter 12 says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yep. Renewing of your mind. You need to put good things in. That's again in Philippians chapter 4, as we read earlier, that he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, etc. Think on these things. So yep. here's a way to get on track. Go back to Psalm 56. Notice a few other things that David does in the midst of great fear. He is fleeing from Saul, ended up in Gath, the hometown of Goliath. He sought refuge from the king, but reminded them, they reminded the king who David was. He began to look like an insane man. And so he, in the midst of that scene, then he writes Psalm 56. And what does he say? He brings his petition to God, verse 1. Secondly, he reminds himself and his readers to take into consideration everything that, uh, that God is seeing about us, including the fact, as he says in the second stanza there in verse 8, you have kept my tossings, you put my tears in your bottle, are they not in your book? So God knows all about us. Right. That's right. And he knows about the situation that we're facing now yep. in this country. And also he reminds himself and us the place, uh, the place to go in time of need is God's word. He says, again, he's looked to God and his word. So that's something from the Power Break podcast, and I would encourage you to check it out at bobrebaker.com. The name of the podcast, or excuse me, the name of the uh, blog, again, is Bring Out the Ledger. Bring out the ledger! I feel like somebody should be walking around with a cart, you know, yelling that. You haven't seen Monty Python's. Oh, yeah, forget I was, I, I'm thinking of that, but of course, every time you say Monty Python, because at one time I was the spam man. <laughs> I think, I think they love to spam. <laughs> yeah, no, but they love to talk about spam, 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 spam. spam. And spam. It was interesting when I was the spam man and I was being interviewed by radio and television stations all over the country that normally when they would go into the interview, they would play that. Oh, I'm sure you didn't get sick of that real quick. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, all I know is that it would help me keep my sponsorship to be interviewed. Yeah. And, I bet it, you that's right up there with every single time as a police officer I walk into a restaurant, someone will yell out, he's here or he did it or something like that. Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> And I'm just like, ah, I've never heard that. Here's, the, here's who you're looking for, officer, right there. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah, it. It's a Gary Rucker. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you had to throw out Gary. Listen, Gary, you know how much love we have for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, so what's happening, Bob? What's going on this week? I can't wait for this, actually. So. <laughs> well, actually, Shoot. we want to put one more pitch out here for the uh, uh, Battle for the Mind special offer that JT has come up with. Folks, JT is hurt. His feelings are hurt. What are we going to do with JT crying? That's true. Boo. Who? Yeah, and he, <laughs> he said that he wanted to spread the word about the p- battle for the mind so much that he would pay for a book that if you would just send him a question and include your name and address, that he'll send you that book for free. And of course, you can you can join you can just order it directly off my website, BobRubaker.com. 
But the battle for the mind is there, and we just want to offer that one more time. We'll pro- mention it again in the program, but this is the last time we're going to mention it on this yeah, on for Pomeroy sure podcast. And, but, it, and you know something, folks? Honestly, I it, we just love the fact that you guys listen and love the fact that you know you guys get something out of what we talk about. And I just wanted to give back. So, you know, it, like I said, if it, if it's you don't want me to have your address, I totally get that. I'm not offended by that in any way. We can arrange for you to pick it up at Christ Presbyterian here in Clearwater. Christ Community Presbyterian. Community Presbyterian. Christ Community Presbyterian. Christ I, am, Presbyterian. I am very sorry. Um, That's all right. And I, I, I stand corrected. Probably <laughs> twice because I messed it up earlier, too. <laughs> That's right? all right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've got a big deacon over there that he's... <laughs> oh, I'm getting to get the club. Is that the sergeant of arms, Deacon? Uh-huh, I get it. Well, check it out, folks. The battle for the mind, and it, it, keep in mind that you can just uh, send us a, a, a question at jt at bobrubaker dot com, and then if we use your question right now. If we just get a question, we'd be happy. And we'll send you a book. And otherwise, check out the other books, including The Power of Gratitude, which really goes along the ledger, you know, yep. filling your mind with gr- good things, including things for which you're grateful. And The Power of Gratitude is another book that I wrote, and you'll find it at uh, BobRubaker.com, along with the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. And uh, the last sermon I preached was Ellen, Psalm 56, all about David and the city of Gath writing that um, wonderful uh, psalm to encourage him and to encourage us, Psalm 56. Check it out. The link, the, the links for my sermons and also the books at bobrebaker.com. All right, so here we go. It's time for What About This? As you know, it is uh, our time on the podcast for questions and answers. You know where to go if you have a question for us, and I'd love to send you a book for that question, jt at bobrebaker.com. But we are going to move on to our question and answer, Bob. All right. Number one, how is the ledger principle a spiritual activity? Well, the spiritual activity is realizing that it is a spiritual thing to fill your mind with good things. I mean, it's a mental thing, and of course, it does pay off physically and everywhere else. But God says it's very clear when he says in the book of Philippians to whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, he says, think on these Those things. things. Yep. Yep. Our minds are very important. So spiritual bliss, discipline brings every thought into captivity and not to allow the world to dictate what you're thinking. Now, we rec- we use this scripture quite a bit here. Both JT and I would like to quote it from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, when he says, The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments. And every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So that takes discipline. And going back to Psalm 56, then we take note of how David treats his fears by focusing on God's word, which produces confidence, not in self, but in God. So just the the ledger principle is saying, well, wait a minute, exactly how much time am I filling my mind with watching the news? Yeah. Or looking at social media and uh, the majority of social media i i saw one one of my preacher friends put on facebook today says i'm i'm leaving facebook i'll be back when things calm down he says i can't stand seeing all the negativity on here yeah it it i mean it, and there's all kinds of statistics that say people are who are active on facebook are more likely to be depressed or suicidal so I'm not entirely sure why anybody would want to be on it. Yeah. However, um, you know, it, it, it does have great things. Like we can share pictures of the kids with our family that are out of state and all that great stuff. But man, you know, I just remember my dad and he used to catch himself in that rut. You know, he would get in the, he'd sit down, he'd turn on Fox News, man. And next thing you know, when I was talking to him, he was talking about all these negative things. And I, you could tell there was a ring of anger because... It's hard for you not, not to take things personally mm-hmm. because if you're in your world, it's personal to you, right? Right. So, man, it, it, it is just such a draining exercise. But think about that directive. Every thought captive. Every that thought means can. everything before you say it, you make sure it's in line with the teachings of Christ, right? Yeah. And it's interesting, when, you know, when I was in radio and television back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, 
the consultant told me one time, he says, you know, Bob, if you want to go forward in your radio career, there, you have to make a choice. And he said, uh, you, can, you either have to be uh, a person that is very positive, okay, which is really hard to do because, I mean, people will love you, but you have to overcome a lot. Yeah, for sure. To do that. Or he says, you can be a negative guy and just be negative on the air all the, about everything. And he says, it doesn't take much. You'll work people up and they'll... Either, and you make them mad, and so they just love being a little bit angry, and so they'll listen to you, what you're going to say. Well, I chose the being positive on the air. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. I saw the people that were in the same radio station that I worked that were dwelt on the negative, and they were miserable people. That's just it. It eats you alive. If all you're thinking about is negative stuff, it eats you alive. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let's turn to the uh, mental aspect of it. So let's look at the ledger from a purely mental mental standpoint. So we already talked about the spiritual side of it. We need to really get the value of thinking in a good, positive way as opposed to the negative, right? We need to get that value. That's right. I mean, uh, you, JT, uh, as a sergeant, are over men and women on on the force. That's correct. And yep. I'm sure that when someone gets stuck on the negative, you have to do something to wake them up to get unstuck. Yeah. Yeah. And the worst mistake that I have made as a supervisor is starting to agree. Oh yeah. It's the worst mistake I've made. Yeah. I've made. And that's a consistent see amongst supervisors that I see. And like I said, I, if there are Christians at my police department, I, they're doing really good at hiding it from me <laughs> okay. as, as far as like what they're practicing and, and they're constantly trying to, there's, there are ones that I know of that I'm friends with, but the direct people that I work with, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know. I, it, it's hard to kind of get the value of these things that are in scripture over to them because they're so far away from it. And this whole generation well, hasn't been taught it. Well, that's where right. people are today. It's interesting. Even as a counselor, uh, and when a person comes and they're just dumping the load, okay, about everything that's wrong in their life, you have the you have the choice. You can either agree with them, yep. okay, or you can say, "Well, tell me about that. Well, yeah. Why why do you think that is? Yeah, you know, and really deep, uh, go deeper on that. But here's something that we all need: this kind of the the bump on the head, not a literal bump on the head, no. although sometimes you'd like to. Sometimes I deserve it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or a kick in the seat. Anyway, um, like the old CD players we used to have, or back in the days when we had forty fives and thirty threes, and you, the, a track baby, something got <laughs> something got stuck. You know, I could get stuck in a track, and you just go over and bump the machine a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, of and course. it would get unstuck. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's where we are. We get stuck on the negative, and uh, obviously, you can't have a constant stream of negative news and conversations and expect anything other than negative outcome. Man, so true. Yep. So, it's, and there's a little uh, scripture in the Book of Proverbs. I believe it's Proverbs 22. It says, "As a man thinks in his heart, so is he." I mean, you yeah. are what you think about. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And it comes out in every single thing that you do. It will come out in your home life. It will come out in your yeah. work life. It'll come out in your exercise life. Everything will be affected by it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just that rut. We yeah. got to get out of that rut, that constant, you know, um, especially, you know, at, at work now, we're starting to have officers come back positive for COVID. Um and there's a lot of negativity, obviously, that's around law enforcement right now nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, the officers feel like, you know, whether it's right or wrong, they 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 think extra about everything that they do because they're like, man, I, I've seen officers get thrown in jail for stuff that I would have done. Hmm. That's the reality of it because we're taught to do those things. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like the rules. Yeah, it's kind of like there's a there's a student that was very proficient. And they did exactly what the master said. And then as soon as they did exactly what the master said, the master turned around and said, that was wrong. Hmm. I mean, that's literally how officers feel. I don't know if that makes wow. sense to people. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's why we need to pray for our officers. For sure. And we will take it and we need it. Um, but that's 
that causes that string of negativity. And yeah. it's so, so important for us to get out of it. It's you know, such a good topic. And, me. you know, when we talk about that, you know, some of the things that uh, I've just noticed that Christians are falling into this trap of the negativity about the COVID-19. Do you understand what Jesus did? According to the book of Hebrews chapter 2, it says he delivered us from the fear of death. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we have no fear of death. And I'm not saying we act stupid, but understand, for a Christian to die is not the end. Nope, it is not. And so sometimes we we live like people out here in the world, that they live under that banner. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, and this so life. they're struggling to hold on to all of it. E- exactly. Because right? they okay, don't So they know get really upset coming. about if things are not going just perfectly. A Christian says, this world is not my home. Yeah. I'm just passing through. Yeah. We're only pilgrims and strangers here. We're aliens. Yeah, we belong. For sure. Our citizenship is in heaven. That's right. So we anyway, the fear factor is uh, I think it's it's accentuated by what we think about, but it yeah. also the fact we've taken our eyes off the fact that Christian has great hope of a glorious future. That's right. And That's if we right. died today, we would be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ forever. Suffering would be over. Yeah, yeah, which is actually pretty awesome. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, and how you don't think about that as being awesome is kind of mind-scratching. But you forget about it. You mm-hmm. know, you, you kind of fall into that rut, right? Man, such good stuff, Bob. Thank you so much. Um, so let's turn to, as we always do, the physical, which is one of my two things that I have to focus on all the time and keep a ledger on, or little John becomes big John, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) Big, bad JT. (laughs) Yeah, big, bad, big, bad. As my my youngest Gabriel said to me, he goes, oh, that's good because you're becoming fluffy, wuffy. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to, oh, that's it, kid. Game on. Anyway, um, so let's talk about the value of cross training because cross training um, really keeps you fresh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, what is it that's beneficial, and why do you cross train? Well, first of all, we're talking about cross training, not necessarily cross fit training, because that is a specific sport. Yes, we're talking okay. about cross training. Cross different training. Than you're your doing favorite. something completely different. That if you're a cyclist, you might do something like swimming and lifting or running. And right now I can't run because of the knee replacement. So every time I have to renew the covenant with my surgeon, every time I see him, you're not running, are you, Bob? No, 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 no. no. That's a I, gift, by the way. That is. Because running is miserable. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, as as I get older, as anybody gets older, the strength descends as you age. And so the swimming, I do swimming because it helps me breathe. And it's yeah. without impact. Uh, yep. so there's no triathlons in my future, but it's fun. It's fun for me just to add a variety and still uh, look on recovery. What about you? What do you do for cross training there, at JT? I know you've taken up swimming too. Yeah, swimming has really become a, a, uh, an awesome thing for me. So, you know, with biking, cycling will always be my first love. I think, like you, oh, right? Yeah. Uh, if I have a choice, and I have the problem is, is if I have hours, I can go cycling. And go out and get a great ride in and feel like I got, you know, some really good stuff accomplished. But swimming's nice because, you know, I can do a 40-minute swim yeah. and, and really burn get some a, good get, calories and get a great workout yeah. in. And plus, I'm hitting muscles that I wouldn't normally hit, all my yeah. upper body stuff if I'm doing freestyle, right? Now you're an accomplished uh, paddleboarder, too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I don't know about accomplished, but I can certainly stay on it. <laughs> so I, I've worked Better my way me, up to folks. not I, falling off. I tried so. it one time. I couldn't stand up on it. So there you go. Ah, that, but that was when I had my bad knees, and so I was all crooked anyway. So. Oh, you'd be good to go, man. I might be good to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Every, every time you say I was all crooked, I always think about Forrest Gump's doctor. We sure got you straightened out, didn't we, boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, cross-training is good for you. So if you're a cyclist, consider doing some other sports once in a while. If you're a runner, consider you know taking up something else. And the very fact, it just gives you a little break and doing something completely different. But even so, it takes discipline to do that, and it's worth it. As we always mention, that discipline does make the difference, and it does in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 104. 
And submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrubaker.com and listen for Bob's answer or my answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Just one more time, folks, we're just going to mention our offer that if you send us a question to jt at bobbrubaker.com and we'll use your question, we'll send you a free book. It's a book for free. It's called The Battle for the Mind. Of course, you can see all about the book on my um, web page at bobbrubaker.com. But, of course, this is the offer, and this is the last time we're going to mention it. Thank you for your patience in this and for putting up with us on this. But, uh, anyway, if you'd like a book, just send us a question to jt at bobbrubaker.com. The battle for the mind will be yours. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at bobbrubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.